So we've seen a few examples of limits and we've seen that, okay, the value of the function may or may not be related to the value of the limit at a given x value. In this section, we're gonna talk about why a limit might fail to exist. And to do this, we're gonna try and understand this thing called a one-sided limit. So we have a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. A left-hand limit says the limit as x approaches c from the left-hand side of f of x. So this little minus sign right here, we would say, is from the left-hand side. That's really all there is to tell us that we're working with a left-hand limit. So the limit as x approaches c from the left-hand side of f of x is equal to l, means that f of x gets closer to l as x gets closer to c from the left-hand side. A right-hand limit is defined similarly. Again, notice that, that this little plus sign right here is really all there is to let us know that this is, in fact, a right-handed limit. So this says the limit as x approaches c from the right-hand side of f of x equals l. just means I approach l as x approaches c from the right-hand side. So let's look at an example here. Here we have uh, f of x in blue, and I'd like to evaluate the limit as x approaches three from the right-hand side of f of x, the limit as x approaches three from the left-hand side of f of x, and the limit as x approaches three of f of x if they exist, and then just you know give their values. So I'm gonna start this problem with the left-handed limit here first. I'm gonna start by looking at the limit as x approaches three from the left-hand side. So here is x equals three right here. This is where most of my work is gonna be centered around. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side of three. So I'm gonna move just a little bit to the left. You can move a full unit. Generally, we should be moving uh, just a teeny tiny bit, but if you need to, we can move a full unit away. We can just wanna move a little bit to the left-hand side of three. And then I wanna ask myself, if I were to trace this function and work my way back to x equals three, because remember this says as x approaches three, we're always heading back to three here. So if I were to trace my function and work my way back towards x equals three, what y value am I approaching? Well here in this case, I'm getting closer and closer to this point right here. Well that has a y value it looks like of positive two. So I would say the limit as x approaches three from the left-hand side of f of x is equal to positive two here. If I wanted to look at the right-hand limit, let me change my color. If I was working on the right-hand limit, so again, here's three, I'm gonna move this time just a little bit to the right-hand side. And I'm gonna find, well, where is my function on the right-hand side of three? So it looks like it starts down here below the x-axis. And imagine yourself tracing this function, working your way back to x equals three. If I'm working my way back to three, I'm approaching, in this case, this open circle. Remember that that open circle tells us about the value of the function. It does not say anything about the value of the limit. So don't read into whether that point is open or closed. You just wanna know, hey, what's the y value that we're getting closer to? So as I approach three from this left-hand side right here, as I get closer and closer to x equals three, I'm approaching this point right here, which looks like it has a y value of negative one. So I would say the limit as x approaches three from the right-hand side of f of x is equal to negative one. So I've talked about the left-hand limit. I've talked about the right-hand limit. Let me change my color one last time here. Well, now let's talk about this guy, limit as x approaches three of f of x. Sometimes we'll call this the two-sided limit. So this says limit as x approaches three of f of x. Remember, in order for the limit to exist, we need to approach the same y value from both sides. So here, if I come at this from the left-hand side, we said we're approaching a y value of two. And if I come at it from the right-hand side, I'm approaching a y value of negative one. So because I'm approaching 
two different y values depending on whether I'm coming at this or approaching from the left or the right, we would say that the limit as x approaches 3, sometimes we call this the two-sided limit. This limit does not exist or is undefined. Just pick your favorite terminology there. And just to relate this back to the example that we looked at, that very first example here, I want to also talk about the value of the function here. So what is f of 3? So remember for f of 3, uh, you, we might be confused. Well, we've got two points right here. Remember that we're looking at the closed circle right there. That tells you the value of the function. Open circles denote holes, and that means that the function does not exist at those points. So f of 3 would be equal to 2 right here. And this leads us into our next theorem here. It says, suppose that f of x is defined for all x near c, except possibly at c. Then the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l, if and only if the limit from the right-hand side is equal to L, and the limit from the left-hand side of f of x is equal to L. Essentially, this is a nice little summary. It says the two-sided limit exists only if one, uh, both one-sided limits are equal here. So if I know, if, I, if you didn't give me the graph, you didn't give me the equation, the only thing you told me, you said, hey, limit as x approaches 2 from the left-hand side of f of x. I know that that's equal to 5, and the limit as x approaches positive 2 from the right-hand side of f of x is also equal to 5. If these two things are equal, then I can say that the two-sided limit as x approaches 2 of f of x must also be 5. That's essentially what this theorem is saying. I don't need to look at the picture. I can just, I know exactly what it is. Um, alternatively, it does go the other way as well. So if I know that the limit as x approaches 2 from, or excuse me, the, the just the limit as x approaches 2, this two-sided limit is equal to 5, then I can also say that the two one-sided limits must also be 5 then. Alternatively, if one of those was different, right? So let's say that uh, if I approach 2 from the right-hand side, and this time I end up with a different y value. This time I end up with 4 this time. Now I would say, well, the two, -sided, uh, the two one-sided limits are not equal, which means that this two-sided limit over here, this does not exist or is undefined. So if the two one-sided limits agree, then the two-sided limit is just also that value. So if the left-sided limit is 5, the right-sided limit is 5, the two-sided limit is also 5. But if those two numbers are, are different, even if it's just by a little bit, right? If one is 5 and the other is 5.01, then that limit does not exist. So let's use these ideas in this theorem here in this next example. We want to sketch the graph of f of x equals absolute value of x plus 2 over x plus 2, and then use that graph to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side, the left side, and then the two-sided limit if they exist. And then if they don't exist, we'll talk about why that is. So here it helps to remember that absolute value is a piecewise defined function. There's a few different ways you could go about constructing this graph. I'm going to use the fact that the absolute value is a piecewise defined function. So I know that g of x equals absolute value of x plus 2. So I'm just going to look at that numerator for a second. I know that this is a piecewise defined function. It's just the absolute value function that's been shifted two units to the left. So it's opposite of x plus 2 if x is less than negative 2. And it stays the same, so it's just x plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Um, and I'll show you another way to do this without using these piecewise defined functions. So if I look at f of x now, keeping this in mind, f of x equals absolute value of x plus 2 over x plus 2. This is equal to 
opposite of x plus 2 over x plus 2, which, hey, those two things can cancel, right? The numerator and the denominator cancel. I'm just left with then a negative 1 if x is less than negative 2. And uh, if x is greater than negative 2, well, it's a positive x plus 2 divided by a positive x plus 2. Again, those two things will cancel. This time, I'm left with a positive 1 if x is greater than negative 2. I'm going to say strictly greater than for right now, and I'll come back and, and address that in just a little bit about why it's greater than instead of greater than or equal to. The other way you could approach this is you could... Um, we could take points on either side of negative 2, so maybe we would construct a little t-chart right here and plug different x values into f of x. So maybe we would pick uh, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And what you would find if you plugged those into your function, we should have negative 1 here, negative 1 here, something which is undefined here, and then positive 1 for both of these. So if I were to graph this function, let me do that in black here. So let's see, here's negative two, positive one, negative one. So let's see, I have on the left-hand side of negative two, it's equal to negative one, so I have a constant function there. And on the right-hand side of negative two, I should have a constant function at positive one. So now we can look at the two one-sided limits. I would start with those two first before we start to talk about the two-sided limit. So let's start with limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left-hand side of f of x. So again, here is negative 2. I'm going to move just a little bit to the left, so I'm going to move just a little bit over here. And if I trace this function back, it looks like I'm heading back to this open circle right here. So in this case, I would say, well, this open circle right here has a y value of negative 1. So the limit from the left-hand side must be negative 1. If I want to talk about the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right-hand side this time of f of x. So I'm going to move just a little bit to the right of negative 2. And I'm going to think about, OK, if I, if I were to trace my function back to negative 2, if I start on that right-hand side, trace my way back to negative 2. In this case, I'm approaching this open circle right here. Looks like it has a y value of positive 1, so that right-handed limit is positive 1. So I've determined the left-handed limit, I've determined the right-handed limit. I can just look at this now and I can say, well, the two-sided limit must not exist then because these two one-sided limits are different. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x does not exist and the reason for this is that the two one-sided limits do not agree because, here we'll say, because negative 1 is not equal to positive 1. And that's just a shortcut for me to say, you know what, the two one-sided limits are not the same, right? Negative 1 is not the same as positive 1. So let's look at one more example in this section. Here I want to sketch the graph of f of x equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 and then use the graph to find the values of the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x, and the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x if they exist, and then if they don't we'll talk about y here. So here in this case, I'm dealing with a rational function. I have f of x equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 all over x minus 1. So we could take numbers around 1 and plug those in. Um, what I would suggest doing here, anytime I look at something, I say, boy, I think that can be factored. I would encourage you to factor that. So I can factor that numerator. I've got a greatest common factor of 2. That would leave me with x squared minus 3x plus 2 all over x minus 1. And then I can actually even factor that further. 
Uh, let's see, I need two numbers that multiply to be a positive two, add to be a negative three. I should have x minus two times x minus one all over x minus one. And I think all of a sudden, this makes it a lot easier to graph this function because now I can say, hey, x minus one in my numerator cancels with that x minus one in the denominator. But that doesn't quite just go away. What that really tells me, if I take that expression, set it equal to zero, I have a whole at x equals one. So whatever the rest of my graph looks like, I will have a whole at x equals one. So if I look at what I'm left over with, if I look at kind of what's left after I cancel, I'm left with two times x minus two. If I take that two and distribute that, I'll have two x minus four. So if I were to graph this function, essentially what I would see is I would see the graph of two x minus four with a whole at x equals positive one. So let's graph this guy then. So I should have, let's see a, Oops, uh, let me make it a little bit bigger so that we can see. I have a y-intercept of negative 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. So I know that I'm going to have a y-intercept there. And then my slope is simply uh, positive 2 over 1. So here I've got my y-intercept. I would move up 1 to the right. Oops, excuse me, up 2 to the right 1 up two to the right one. And I would see something that looks like this, mostly, except I have this hole at x equals one. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and erase right in here. And I'm going to include a hole in my graph right there. Once I have the graph, evaluating this, these limits is a whole lot easier to do. So let's start with the left-hand limit here. If I approach one from the left-hand side, if I approach one from this left-hand side right here, uh, if I look at the limit as x approaches one from the left-hand side of f of x, what y value does that approach? It looks like it's approaching a y value of negative two. If I were to approach one from the right hand side limit as x approaches one from the right hand side of f of x. So this time I'm going to approach one from the right hand side. Again, I'm approaching that hole. That hole has a y value of negative two. So here I have the left handed limit is negative two. The right handed limit is negative two. So that means that the two sided limit as x approaches one of f of x must also be negative two here since the left and the right hand limits are equal.